Okay, so on this one, I got to solve for x, um, which means I got to have x equals some stuff. I want all my x's on one side and all my numbers on the other. What do I do first? Do you guys remember? What do you think we should do first? Take a guess. Yeah, good guess. She said multiply the 5 by the 2x. What's the fancy word for this if I do it through the parentheses? No, it's not the inverse. Well, we are kind of, but it's dis distributive property. So 5 times 2x is 10x, right? 5 times 2 is 10, right? So if I have 2x's and I multiply those by 5, I get 10x's. What's 5 times positive 1? Positive 5. Why did I say it that way? Because I don't want to forget that plus 5. And then over here, I just have 10x. Uh-oh. I got to move the 10x. Which one should I move? Let's move this one. How do I move this 10x right here? I want to move it to the other side. How do I move the whole thing? No, we subtract 10x from both sides. What's 10x minus 10x? Zero, right? What's zero plus five? Five. What's 10x minus 10x? Zero. Wait a second. Can five equal zero? No, never. Never. This is never. So this is not true. And so whenever you get a statement like this, 3 equals 7, 10 equals 13, and it's not true, that means it has no solutions which happens sometimes. Sometimes we have an equation that we can't get a value for x that makes the statement true. So we say it has no solutions. Okay. So if you do the math, double check your math. Sometimes you make a mistake. But if you crank through and you solve an equation and you get 3 equals 7 or 8 equals 19, then that's no solutions. Let's do another one. Are you guys ready or no? Yeah. 